Last time we talked about debugging threads with the parallel stacks window, but debugging tasks can be just as hard. So learn how we can debug those using the parallel stacks window on this episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Leslie Richardson, and today I'm excited because we are joined once again by Mark and Ram from the Visual Studio Debugging Diagnostics team. And last week, or last time, not even last week, we talked about how you can debug your threads with the Parallel Stacks window. And now we're going to talk about how you can use the Parallel Stacks window to debug your tasks. And if you want to watch the threads video, link is below. So welcome back, Mark and Ram. Hey, Leslie. Awesome. So we are going to talk about tasks today. So what are some of the unique problems that users might face when they're trying to diagnose issues with tasks versus threads? I, I mean, I, I think I start the idea that um, kind of tasks, the async await programming is everywhere now. And um, rather than kind of take on all the responsibility of managing threads. People simply use tasks, use the async, async await keywords to unlock the potential of parallel programming. And that's great. Um, but it's also, there's some interesting caveats to doing it well and doing it incorrectly. And again, we think parallel stacks window is just like a great opportunity for you to kind of review how well you're doing it. If something's wrong, maybe you can find it using the parallel stacks window. Awesome. So. Can we see how it works? Sure thing. Let me show you an example. Um, um, this is my buggy demo code application. I have this is an open source app I have. Sounds like a very quickly... reliable application. <laughs> yeah, it, right. It's it's one I use to quickly kind of put together demo code of things to do badly. So if you come across this in the open source world, this right. is the wrong way to do it. Um, inevitably, this is the bad way of doing it, right? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to execute an endpoint on here that I think is interesting. Now, I actually got the idea from this from a fellow software engineer at Microsoft called Sergey Tepliakov. Um, he was kind of thinking about the parallel stacks window, and he was thinking about ways in which um, task task based programming can be done incorrectly. So I'm going to, as I've done before, I'm going to pause. Uh, the debugger, um, and it's gone into the uh, threads view, and you can see there's absolutely nothing wrong with this threads view. Um, there's nothing kind of technically wrong here. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to the task view, and while you know you're not seeing the kind of um, kind of danger signs, danger, danger, danger. There is something I want to kind of describe here. Maybe Parallel, um, Ram can help me kind of describe this, but there's this kind of circular notion going on here with these tasks that we think is problematic. And thankfully, the Parallel Stacks window is kind of letting you know um, that, that that's an actual problem. Um, and so, so if I click, oh, go ahead. No, just a second. I wonder if we should uh, back up a little. Like, do we want to show what you want, what you clicked on in the, uh, like, sure. you know, to get into the situation? Like, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, so I've got a set of links here, uh, unresponsive, and I clicked on my deadlock example here. And then, then as, as I mentioned, I paused the paused the application here, and that has never returned, right? So what I've got into the situation here is that that request that I clicked on has never actually returned. Yeah, so right now here, it's um, like the whole thing about async is that um, the physical call stack or the threads view may not actually tell you anything uh, because nothing actually may be running right now on a thread, right? Uh, sometimes the whole thing about asynchronous programming is that things may run in the future, you know, uh, kind of like a promise. Things will run sometime later and not necessarily happening right now on the physical stack. So that's where the parallel stacks with task view is quite helpful because it kind of shows what is the async uh, call stacks that are right now happening in your application. Um, so as a general principle, when you're using the async await, model of programming to write asynchronous code, 
it makes writing async code really easy, right? It's like you're just writing regular synchronous code. So the debugger is also trying to do the same thing to make sure your debugging is as easy as debugging synchronous code. The only thing you have to do is switch to the parallel stacks with tasks view. Uh, so the now async stacks can get a bit tricky because uh, async stacks need not necessarily just be linear stacks. You, you have things like task or when all or task dot when any and uh, which essentially causes kind of branching in the async stacks. So that's why sometimes async stacks can look a bit strange. You can have things like cycles. And uh, in this case, you again, you have a cycle and that's really going to deadlock your application because if one task is awaiting another task and another task is awaiting the same one, you know, it's not really going to proceed. So uh, the async, uh, like the parallel stacks with tasks, you can help you figure out these kinds of issues. And if you uh, double click on, you know, one of those frames, it will take you to the line of code that, uh, you know, that caused the issue. All right. So in this case, it looks like it does actually take you to that line of code that might be at the very least a point of interest, <laughs> since in this yeah. case, um, it's not really telling you specifically what is wrong aside from you're kind of going into a circular yeah, so in this case, T1 is awaiting T2. And if you were to switch to the other one, you'll see that T2 is awaiting T1. So that's kind of like a classic. Uh, it's kind of like a deadlock uh, yeah. in the sense that both the tasks are awaiting each other and neither can really complete before the other one is done. And so you kind of have a deadlock. Yeah, so you go. No, you go. No, you go. Yeah. So, yeah, what was surprising to me is that I didn't actually know until Ram kind of was letting me know about. I didn't know actually this was a possibility with task with with async await scenarios, and um, what um, Sergey had kind of was telling everybody on Twitter that we, you know we were really happy to see is that not only is this scenario possible, but parallel stacks can find it even with parallel tasks. So even if you have all these ex years of experience with threads, you probably wouldn't find it unless you're able to construct the the entire kind of um, the, the kind of machinery behind the task um, uh, call itself, and so we've done that for you here. So there's no need for you to kind of put that together in some kind of uh, in some kind of weird way. We, we if you go to the parallel stacks window, you can kind of get the feedback you need. Awesome. So um, both of you also mentioned like the call stack and like in the previous um, episode, we talked about how you can use the call stack alongside the parallel stacks window to get a sense of what is being called and when and stuff. Does the same apply in a tasks context? Yeah, the same does apply actually, because kind of keeping in line with the idea that asynchronous programming or asynchronous debugging is, you know, we try to make it as easy as synchronous debugging. If you were to double click any of the frames in the parallel stacks with tasks view, we will switch you to seeing the async stack. For example, if you look at the debug location toolbar above uh, where it says thread, it just says async call stack. And uh, so, and if you look at the call stack window, it will show you uh, what the current async call stack that you've selected is. And you can see that it starts out with cycle detected because that's what, uh, you know, that's what we are at. And that can tell you, uh, and in this way, even the async call stack would behave like a regular call stack. You can click on um, individual frames, you can view locals and uh, you know, in the locals window and all that good stuff. And uh, uh, filtering external code works the same way. And essentially it kind of models the regular debugging experience. So, you know, debugging async code shouldn't be hard and that should help you write better async code. Mm -hmm. I like that it even tells you um, that a cycle was detected yeah. in the call stack. That's great. Yeah. And anytime you have a cycle that's there in your async code, that typically means that you know, you're stuck. There's no way your app is going to proceed. <laughs> yep. Well, great. That is really exciting. I mean, I've I mean, be, been on the team at one point in time. <laughs> I, it's been cool to see how the parallel stacks, both for tasks and for threads, uh, has evolved in recent years. Like it looks so much different from how it used to be just even back in VS 2019. And that's really exciting. 
Yeah, and we encourage people to keep the feedback coming. This has kind of been the response of customers using this tool, talking about this tool in public, and we're listening. And if you have more features that you want to um, include in there, let, let us know. My my uh, Twitter handle is there. Just reach out. I'm happy to kind of talk about it. Awesome. Yeah, I can't wait to see what's next for the Parallel Stacks window. Yeah, definitely have more coming. Yay. Yeah, cool. Because, yeah, <laughs> debugging tasks and threads can be real tricky. <laughs> so, yeah, looking forward to it. Well, Mark and Ron Kumar, thank you so much for being on the show for both thank episodes. <laughs> thank you, Liz. And um, yeah, and y'all, if you want to learn more, definitely check out the links in the show notes below. Go check out the other video on parallel stacks for threads if you haven't already. And yeah, as Mark mentioned, share your feedback, go to the developer community and share there what you feel like could be improved in the space. Or you could also ping uh, Mark on Twitter. He's got his Twitter handle and you can let him know there. So thanks once again, everybody. And until next time, happy coding. <laughs>